Welcome to the Coolidge Media Network. I'm your host, Kevin P. from Coolidge High School. The Washington Teachers Union has launched a major initiative called Learning Doesn't Stop, Lessons on TV. Let's check out our first lesson from Mr. Bonham from a school within the school. Lesson two will be hosted by Nadia Tani from Kimball Elementary. Let's see what we can learn today. How's it going, everybody? My name is Raphael Bonham. And if this is your first time tuning in, I'm glad that you came, that you turned on this station and you are watching this math lesson. If you are returning, thank you. Thank you for showing the love. I hope that you've been staying healthy and I hope that you are hungry for some math. Yes, I am a third grade math teacher, but I will be delivering a second grade math lesson. That's very important. It kind of goes along with what I was working with last week. I know we only have a, a limited amount of time. So when I get started with this, I want you to just uh, know that even if I'm not complete and done, you can find a lot of resources and a lot to continue to practice at this website, wtlocal6.net. I'll show it to you at the end of this lesson. But let's get started with a quick warm-up. Maybe you haven't been doing math even though we should be doing math and talking math every day. We're gonna have some fun. The first thing that I want you to practice is the next 10. What I mean is that when I see the number 38, I wanna think of, hmm, how many more do I have to add to get it to the next 10? And what is a next 10? Next 10, remember, is multiples of 10. So. What would be the next 10? What would be the next 10? All right. So I am trying to make sure, hmm, if I add 2 to this 38, I add a 2, that will give me the 40. 40 is the next 10. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with that. If I look at the number 54, 54 might be far away from the next 10, but I still want to think of, hmm, what is the next 10? This is just practice of making 10s, getting to the next 10, all right? So, we always look at the ones place, four. Four plus what would equal 10? Four plus six would equal 10. And the next 10 after 54 would be 60. These are just two digit number and those are examples for two digits. On the flip side, it might look a little bit different when we actually have to work with three digit numbers. For example, 165. 165, what is the next 10? I might be a little bit confused because I see a 100, but that's fine. I'm looking in the tens place, which is right here, 100s, 10s, 1s. I'm looking in the 10s place, and what I notice is there's a 6. But I notice in the 1s place is a 5. Hmm. A 5. 5 plus what will get me to 10? That's what you have to think of in your head. 5 plus a 5 would get me to 10. And 165 plus 5 is 170. You see, it's 65 plus 5, that's 70. The 100 does not change. That's with a three-digit number. That's just an example for that, of getting to the next 10 with a three-digit number. It's important. Know your skip counts by 10s. Practice, practice every day. Set a timer. See if you could go from 0 all the way to 1,000. Skip counting by 10. That's a challenge from me to you. Now, let's keep it moving with our main course. That was a little appetizer, something to get your brain going, and a skill that would be very, very helpful for when we start our little um, lesson for today. I'm erasing my board. Perfect. Now, as you can see, what we are going to work on is adding more than two add-ins. Last week, I had told you that add-ins are numbers that you combine together. So we're going to be working with 
three numbers as I was doing last week and we're gonna work with four numbers something I didn't really get to last week but we will today I'll make sure of that I promise check this out the first equation that we're gonna look at is 37 plus 25 plus 19 now some of you might be familiar with adding and it being horizontal some of you might stack it up and like to do it like this for me this way isn't that fun and trust me I always didn't think math was fun but as I became a third grade teacher I realized that math is fun because there's so many different ways that you can get to the same answer but not taking the same path let's try this out so 37 plus 25 plus 19 three add-ins they're all two digit add-ins watch what I'm gonna do I'm looking at which number is closest to the next 10 and I'll take a little bit from another add-in to help me out so I have a 7 I'm looking at the ones I see a 7 a 5 and a 9 alright I understand 9 is the closest to the next 10 19 would be my best bet to focus on right now so if I want to get 19 to the next 10 the next 10 would be 20 so that means I just need to add 1 to 19 to make it a 20 watch what I do I see that I have a 25 over here this 25 doesn't mean it always has to stay at 25 I'm gonna take a 1 out of this 25 and now this 25 is not a 25 anymore it's a 24 and a 1 I cross this out that's my first step next what I'm going to do I'm going to take this 19 in this 1 and turn it into a 20 now I turn that 19 into the next 10 perfect I use this 19 and I use that 1 now all I'm left with is 37 24 and 20 I could look at 37 and 24 and see if I could bring one of them to the next 10 look 7 is closer to the next 10 then four is. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit out of this 24. How many more do I have to add to 37 to get it to the next 10, the next multiple of 10? I had to add three more because three plus seven would be 10. And three more would get me to 40. So I'm going to take out a three. And if I take a 3 out of 24, what am I left with? 21. I cross out that 24 because it's a 3 and a 21 now. Now I'm going to combine this 37 and that 3. Perfect. 37 plus 3 equals 40. So I don't have a 37 or a 3 anymore. I combine it to make 40. Now what I'm left with, let's see, I have 40, 21, and 20. That's all I have left. This is where it gets so easy. I could combine 40 and 21. 1 plus 0 equals 1. 2 tens or 20 plus 4 tens or 40 equals 61. So I use this 21 and I use this 40. Now all I'm left with is 20 and 61. I add those together. Zero ones plus one is one. Two tens plus six tens equals 81. And like I said, I circle my final answer and put a crown on it like Basquiat, the artist. So this equation, the sum was 81. There were other ways that you could have done this. Like I said, after watching this lesson, you could go back and you can do this in your own 
way. I promise you. And it's going to come out in so many different ways. It's fun. That was it. Addition equation with three addings. We had 37, 25, 19. Now we're going to do an addition equation with four addings. Don't be nervous. All right? You got this. I got this. I got it under control. You got it under control. I believe in you. Let's start off with something like this. 16 plus 17 plus 18 plus 19. I think I'm going to make a lot of next 10s with this one. Let's check it out. I'm looking at these numbers. Which number can I get to the next 10? I'm looking at the ones place. I have a 6, I have a 7, I have an 8, I have a 9. Hmm. Well, 9 is closest to 10, so I'm able to get from 19 to the next 10 quicker. 19 plus what will get me to the next 10? What is the next 10 after 19? 20. So I need to add 1 to this 19 to get it up to 20. So I am going to take a 1 from this 18 just because it's closer. I try to be as organized as possible. So just because it's closer. Boom. Now, if I take a 1 out of 18, what's left in that 18? A 17. I don't have an 18 anymore. Instead, I have a 17 and a 1. What I'm going to do next is combine that 19 and 1. 19 and 1 is that next multiple of 10, which is 20. I cross out the 1. I cross out the 19. Next, all I have left is 16, 17, 17, and it's 20. I like these numbers right here. They end, they have zero in a ones place. They're easy to work with, friendly numbers. They're not spicy. These other numbers might get a little spicy, but don't worry. We got this. I want to get to the next 10. I'm looking. All right, 17. How much can I add to 17 to get it to the next 10? I'm going to take out a 3. So I'll take out a 3 from this 17. And what would be left? It would be a 14. So I don't have 17 anymore. Now I can connect and add 17 plus 3. That equals 20. So I don't have this 17 and 3 anymore. I have 16, 14, 20, and 20. Hmm. Now, can I make another next 10? Can I make one of these get to the next 10? Well, I have a 4 and a 6. I got I need just six more, uh, four more to get up to six. So I'm going to take out a four, and I'm left with a ten. I cross that out. Now what I have is 16 and four. That's 20. I cross out the four and the 20. So now I have 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 20. 20 plus 20, uh, 20 plus 10, 30. I cross those out. 20 plus 20 equals 40. So I'm only left with 30 and 40. I add those together, and that's 7. And that is my final complete answer. Ladies and gentlemen, we have run out of time, and it happened so quickly. Oh, my goodness. Like I said, my name is Raphael Bonhomme. I hope that I see you next time. Practice this math. And look at more resources at WTULocal6.net. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello, boys and girls. I'm back. It's Miss Tawny. I'm so happy to be with you. We are all ready and geared up. I've been getting ready for you for our week seven lesson. All right. Before we get started, you know what we have to do. Take attendance, Miss Torney's way. Oh, here we go. I'm going to say, say your name. And you're going to tell me your name nice and now. Then I'm going to say, how do you feel? And then you're going to tell me how you feel. Are we ready? All right.
Say your name. My name is Miss Torney. How do you feel? I feel magnetic. Say your name. My name is Miss Torney. How do you feel? I feel magnetic. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Another week with my friends, Aiden and Andreas, Amari, Sarah, how are you? Good to see you, Julian and Frank. Thank you for bringing new friends on. <sighs> this time I was ready for you guys. Last week, there were so many things going on. But this week, let me tell you what I've been doing. So now that it's springtime, guess what I noticed? Lots of birds. Have you noticed birds? Yes, lots of birds. And I wanted to make sure I had nice birds in my yard. So this is what I did. I went and found a hummingbird feeder. This is just a little one, right? And I'm going to put it in my yard, in my garden, so that I can attract some hummingbirds. But they're all kind of birds that reappear in the springtime. You know why they reappear? because they're migrating birds, right? That's a new word, migrating birds. They leave us in the winter and they come back in the spring and summer. So it got me to thinking, hmm, how do birds know when to come back? And how do they even know how to come back and where to come back to? Did you know that birds come back to the same trees? every time. That's why it's important to not cut down your trees unless they really are dangerous, okay? Because those are homes for our birds. But I was starting to wonder, how in the world did they know how to come back? And I started to do some research. And you know, Miss Torney always finds out new information. And when she finds it out, what does she do? Shares it with you. And oh boy, Put your hats on because we're going to do a lot of learning. So remember last week, we talked about all the different forms of energy. Remember that? And one of them was electromagnetic energy. Super important for what we're going to go over today. Electromagnetic. That's a busy word, isn't it? Now, all kinds of things give off electromagnetic energy. But the other part to it is, it also makes a sound, right? Have you ever gone in your refrigerator and heard a humming noise, like mm, that kind of noise? Yeah, it's the generator in the refrigerator, right? Well, that's one type of sound. Now, electromagnetic devices also make sounds, okay? So let's talk about what kind of electromagnetic sounds could we hear? Lots of them. So here we have, yes, from thunder. Have you ever been in a storm? Oh my gosh, that makes a lot of noise, right? Thunder makes a lot of noise. What else do we have? Your computer and a pencil sharpener from school, right? When you use that pencil sharpener, it makes a lot of noise. But even when you're not using it, you can hear a hum. Can't you? And we also have cell phone towers, lots of those, right? We've been using a lot of cell phone towers and towers that are in the airports as well, right? All of those make like this small little humming noise that let us know that they're working, okay? Now, what I found out was birds have a use for electromagnetic powers, right? They have something that gives them that type of radar, right? It's like a compass, right? Has anybody ever seen a compass before? Well, here's one here, okay? Here's a picture of a compass. That's pretty cool. Have you ever seen this before? It has poles, right? North, south, east, and west. And who can remember what the biggest magnet we have? The biggest one. Yes, it's the earth. See that? Yeah, it's the earth. And yes, those poles on the compass are aligned to the poles on earth. Now you must be saying, well, Miss Torney, what does this have to do with my birds? 
Well, I found out that birds have an internal compass, right? Just like that. See that? This is where I am. This compass shows where I am. It's even a compass on your cell phone. If you don't have one, look on your cell phone, see if you can find one, okay? Yes. And birds have one internally, right? Right inside that helps them regulate and figure out where they are and where to leave, how to come back. Now, really important information. There is, it's a biological function of birds, okay? It's something that they're born with. They don't have to do anything special to make it work. They're just born with it and it works. Researchers say that it's in, it's the protein in their eyes. Isn't that interesting? I found that really, really interesting. So something else I found out was birds don't really like those sounds. Can you believe it? I thought about that and said, hmm, why would that be? Those electromagnetic noises interfere with the bird's sense of motion and their internal compass, right? So have you ever had a really good ice cream cone? I have. Or a really good, what else? Snow pop, right? What happens when you eat those? Oh my gosh, I've had these. And what happens, oh my gosh, it's brain freeze, right? All of a sudden my brain hurts. Oh, I can't think. I don't know what's happening, right? But does the ice cream really freeze your brain? Do you think your brain is actually really frozen? No, that's a silly thought, isn't it? Your brain isn't actually really frozen, but it's just hard to think, right? That's what happens to the birds when it hears those electronic, electromagnetic noises. They just can't think, right? It's interference, right? Those electronics make it hard for them to think and hard for them for that internal compass to find its way and for it for them to find their way back. So birds don't like those. But if you think about it in our communities and neighborhoods, we have lots of those, don't we? Where can we find those different devices that make those electromagnetic noises? Where can you find them? Tell me what tell me all that. Yes, cell phone towers, we talked about those. Yes, right in the airports. And if you go outside and look out your window, you'll probably see something that's going to cause some type of electromagnetic noise. You guys are so smart. I've got a new toy. I'm giving you a hand. Good job for doing great work. You guys, let me tell you, when I keep talking to your teachers about how well you're doing in distance learning and working with me at home and then being able to share this great information with them at home, the excitement is unbelievable. They're so happy to know that you guys are working so hard. So now we've got to figure out how to get our birds, right, to be able to follow their migration pattern without too much, right? without too much going on. Because when they're distracted or we have interference or we get brain freeze and we can't think, oh my gosh, right? We might lose our way. Could you imagine if you had brain freeze when your teacher asked you a question? What do you think your teacher would think about that, right? They'll say, hello, hello, can you hear me? Yes, oh my gosh, I love it. You guys are giving me great answers. Boy, you get another hand. Yay! Good job. So now we're going to turn our attention to our distance learning packet. We're going to find out all about birds and migration and how those electromagnetic noises impact their ability to find their way, their way home. And I bet some of you are going to come up with some ways that we might be able to help our birds, right? And truly help the environment, right? Because all those extra electromagnetic rays and noises also affect 
our environment. So I know you guys are super smart and you're going to be thinking about that as you read about that. Now, those are my third graders. Now my second graders, I've got a task for you. I want you to look out your window, or sit on your porch, and I want you to identify something that may create some electromagnetic noise. All right? Once you identify it, I want you to draw it and maybe tell us how you think we can adapt that particular instrument so that it doesn't make so much noise because you guys are scientists, right? We figured that out the other day. We are all scientists, although we're working on ELA, but this is all scientific information, right? So when we read, what do we have to remember? Our a very important information, right? When we read, we have to remember to do a few things. Yes, we've got to underline our major points. We've got to circle unknown words and phrases. We have to put question marks by our readings, anything that we want to ask about, and always put notes in the margins because those notes are going to be great for you when you're in discussion with your teachers, right? They're going to know that you read everything you should have read. Awesome. So we're going to go in our distance packet, right? In our distance learning packet online, or if your teachers have it in teams, it'll be there. Our second graders, what are you going to do? Tell me out loud. Oh my gosh. Yes. You're going to find something outside. You're going to draw it, and then you're going to come up with a way to adapt that particular item, right? My third graders, tell me what you're going to do. Oh, my gosh. You did a hand, too. You're going to go into your pack, and you're going to read all about the migration patterns of our birds and how those electromagnetic noises impact those internal compasses and their ability to migrate back to their homes. Whew. That's a lot of work. You guys are awesome. Oh my gosh. I love my new toy. I'm going to give you guys a hand on the way out today. And you guys continue to be super students and wonderful scholars. And I'll see you next time. Bye. You get a hand. See you next week.